The story starts with Willy Wonka, a chocolate maker, coming to a new city on a ship to sell his chocolates at the gallery's gourmet. As he explores the city, he loses most of his money and has no place to stay. Luckily, a big man named Mr. Bleacher finds him and offers him a place to stay. Bleacher takes Willy to his house where he lives with Mrs. Scrubbit. They seem nice, offering Willy a drink and a place to sleep. While Willy is signing their agreement, a girl named Noodle, who works there, quietly tells him to read the fine print before signing. However, Willy doesn't pay attention to her advice. The next day, Willy goes to the town square to meet everyone and show his special chocolate called Hover Chocks, made with a unique flying bug. Three local chocolate shop owners, Arthur Slugworth, Fickle Gripper, and Pranos, try the Hover Chocks. Even though they seem to like it, they tell Willy it's the worst chocolate ever. Then, they start floating because of the flying bug. Willy lets the crowd buy the chocolate, but the chief of police and Officer Affable take away his chocolates. However, Officer Affable gives Willy a single coin to pay for his room. When Willy returns to Scrub It and Bleacher, they make up unreasonable charges and make him work for them for many years to repay the supposed debts. They throw him down a laundry chute where he meets others who were also tricked by Scrub It and Bleacher, like Accountant Abacus Crunch, Plumber Piper Benz, Telephone Operator Lottie Bell, and Comedian Larry Chucklesworth. Among them is Noodle, the girl who warned Willie to read the fine print. She has the highest debt and the longest work sentence. In his room, Willie finds out that Noodle has never tasted chocolate before. He shares how his mother taught him to make chocolate and inspired his creativity. Using a special chocolate-making machine with unique ingredients like liquid sunlight, Willie creates a chocolate with a lightning bolt on it. Noodle tries it and says she likes it, but doesn't think she'll get to have more. Willie then starts thinking of a plan to make more chocolate and promises Noodle a lifetime supply. The chief is seen entering a church and going underground through the corrupt Father Julius. He meets with Slugworth, Fickle Gruber, and Pra Nose, who are known as the Chocolate Cartel. They see Willie as a problem because his chocolate is really tasty and he sells it at a low price, which threatens their business. The three bad guys then offer the chief a lot of chocolate to handle Willie, even if it means using dangerous methods. Willie and Noodle come up with a plan to confuse Scrubbit into thinking Bleacher is a rich person, and they trick Bleacher into believing Scrubbit secretly likes him. Willie also makes a machine with their dog tittles to do laundry faster, so everyone can relax. Then, Willie and Noodle go to the zoo to get giraffe milk for his new creation. They use a truffle to distract a guard, and Willie goes to find a giraffe named Abigail. They succeed, and Willie uses special mints to feed Abigail, who lets him milk her. While at the zoo, Noodle shows Willie a ring with the letter N on it, which is why Scrub It calls her Noodle. She shares her dream of having a real home and family. Willie promises to help her make that dream come true. After coming back home, Willie tells the other workers about his plans. Abacus cautions him that the chocolate cartel not only runs the chocolate sales in town, but also keeps records of their dishonest actions. These actions include making their chocolate less pure and saving the extra in a vault below the church, guarded by Father Julius and many chocolate-loving monks. Even though they understand the dangers, the others agree to support Willie in selling his chocolate without any trouble. Willie starts by using his giraffe milk macaroons to give to a man with a lack of confidence to sweep his girlfriend off her feet. He then sells other delicious products and escapes from the chief by going down storm drains. The chief catches onto the scheme and begins to order men to guard the storm drains, while also dealing with his increasing weight gain from all the chocolate he has been consuming. One night, Willie sets up a trap for a little orange man who has been taking his chocolates. The trap works, and Willie meets an Oompa Loompa named Lofty. Lofty says Willie took cocoa beans from Loompa Land, making his life hard. Now, Lofty wants enough chocolate to go back home. Tricking Willie, Lofty hits him with a frying pan and flees with his chocolates. The chocolate cartel watches Willie and sees that Noodle is helping him. They seem to know her and see her involvement as a big issue. Slugworth then goes to scrub it and bleach her with a wicked plan. Noodle gives Willie the keys to the shop in the town square so he can open it and sell his yummy treats. When he opens the shop, 
People love the tasty creations like cotton candy clouds, edible flowers, and chocolate trees. However, the joy turns into chaos when the crowd starts growing hair that changes colors quickly. Willie realizes the chocolate has been poisoned with something called Yeti Sweat and tries to warn everyone. Instead of listening, the people get angry and wreck his shop. Things get worse when an upset mother cuts down a chandelier, causing a fire that spreads in the shop. Feeling sad amid the wreckage of his shop, Willie is approached by the chocolate cartel. They offer enough money to clear everyone's debts with scrub it and bleacher, but with a condition, Willie must leave town and never make or sell chocolate again. Despite his reluctance, Willie agrees and leaves on a boat. Later, Lofty returns, thinking Willie still owes him. Willie remembers a mark on Slugworth's hand similar to Noodle's ring, showing they are related to Slugworth. Worried for Noodle's safety, Willie decides to go back. When he tries to tell the captain, they discover the boat is rigged with dynamite by the cartel. Willie and Lofty jump off the boat before it explodes. Scrub it allows Abacus, Piper, Lottie, and Larry to go free, but she tells Noodle that Slugworth paid her to keep Noodle there forever, in addition to poisoning the chocolates. Willie joins the others in helping to break Noodle free as they plan to break into the chocolate cartel's vault and expose their schemes so that she can be safe. The group takes Abigail from the zoo to scare Julius and the monks at the church. Willie and Noodle sneak underground, but the cartel finds them and Slugworth points a gun at them. It's revealed that Noodle is Slugworth's niece and her father Zeppi passed away. Her mother asked Slugworth to take care of Noodle while she was sick, but he left her with Scrubbit and told her mother that she died so that he could inherit their family's chocolate fortune. The villains then throw Willie and Noodle into their vault in an attempt to drown them in chocolate, but first, Willie gives Slugworth a jar of his chocolate to give to Lofty if he sees him, but the three jerks eat all of it. Just before the vault completely fills up, Lofty comes upon the church and drains the vault, mostly so Willie can repay his debt. Just as Slugworth, Ficklegribber, and Prodnose try to leave, Willie and Noodle come out with a book that shows their crimes. Affable takes the book and sees the chief's name in it. The chief gets arrested, but the cartel tries to escape. However, they start floating again because they ate hover chocks with a delayed reaction. Willie reveals that their reserves won't save them, so he turns on the town square fountain, making their chocolate burst out and ruining them. They uncontrollably fly out of town. The people in town then taste the chocolate with Willie's ingredients. Willie goes back to selling his chocolate and takes out the last bar his mother made before she passed away. There's a note saying it doesn't matter how chocolate is made, but who it's made and shared with. Willie shares it with Noodle, Abacus, Piper, Lottie, and Larry. He then reveals that they all made some calls and found Noodle's mother, Dorothy Smith, who works at a library. And Willie brings Noodle to meet her mother for the first time. Willie and Lofty then go to an abandoned castle where Willie plans to start creating more of his signature confections. Although Lofty feels the debt is repaid, he admits that he is not very popular in Lumpaland. Willie offers him a position working with him, to which Lofty agrees. Soon, Willie establishes what will become his world-famous chocolate factory.